Time for us to get started. Officer, it's on you. <laughs> we go open with a word of prayer. Father, Lord, I just thank you for this evening. Father, for the opportunity to come out and to, to praise you and to worship you today. Father, I just thank you for all that you're doing here. I just pray for your leadership, Father. Guide us in the direction you want us to go, Lord. God, I pray for you. You'll be with our pastors, Brother Mike, Brother Whalen, Brother Hugh. Father, that they could lead us the way you want it to go here, Father. God, I just thank you for all you're doing. Pray that everything we do is done to bring glory and honor to you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Um, most of the announcements y'all have heard three times today. Right? Somebody read them, or if you can't, read them yourself. <laughs> Ma'am? Okay. I want to make a mention of one. If we've been slipping on some of our prayer meeting time, so tomorrow night we're having prayer meeting here at the church. Pray for God's direction for the church. That's what our Monday night prayer meetings are for. It's to pay, pray specifically for the church <laughs> and the direction it's going if for our leadership here. So we will meet here tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. We need, uh, we need tonight, we come here to work, not to eat, not to have a good time, like Brother Mike said this morning. We're going to work, get set up for the festival. Roxanne, you had something to say? Yes, Holiday Bazaar, December 7th. If you know crafty people, let me know. She said crafty, not crabby. There's two different. <laughs> okay, Brother Wayland, it's your turn. I'm <laughs> Let's stand together. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. We're going to sing after I said that, huh? There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, Lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. There are blessings you cannot receive till you and believe you're the one to profit when you say I am going to walk with Jesus all the way been revived when we shall leave this place. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word, it's that 
sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Tells me one a Savior's love who died to set. He tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because he first loved me, it tells me what my father has bestowed for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, guilt sunshine all the way. Because he first loved me, it tells me one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in bears a part that none can bear below. Because he first ushers, y'all make your way down. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Father, thank you for this opportunity to come to your house, Father, and learn more about your word through through scripture and also through the song service. Father, we just uh, ask that you bless the giver uh, for these tithes and offerings, and may the tithes and offering, offerings bless this church. Forgive us where we pay. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That way we have it, the microphone handy if you're willing to say something as the pictures are playing, what God maybe spoke to you about on the trip. So if we can get everybody together up here, it'll help. Get us, and We don't have to run all over the sanctuary and track you down.
All right. Well, as you can tell, it's only about a fourth or a third of the group. You'll see in the pictures some of the, uh, how large the group was. I think it was 46 people, most from our church, but a few from uh, McClendon, a few from Cyprus. Anywhere else? Mount Vernon had some? Okay. Maybe two. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Can you turn down the lights up here just a little bit to the picture? Um, turn the music down just a little bit. So if we want to go ahead and just share some things while the music plays softly in the background. Uh, why don't y'all take turns and uh, whoever wants to go first and just kind of share. Maybe something God that just amazed you about God in this trip as, uh, I don't know, just something God spoke to you about, something you learned, maybe, something you hadn't really thought about in the Bible, uh, and just what stands out, what, what thoughts you left there with that you'll never forget. Ms. Jewel? Yeah. Uh, well, I just, uh, we, I was amazed. We both were when we went. It was just awesome. I mean, Keep the microphone a little closer. Okay. It was obvious that uh, it was God that, you know, that headed all of that. And there's no way it could have been done otherwise. <laughs> and the ark, it was just basically a floating hotel for humans and animals. <laughs> but they, they wanted for absolutely nothing during that time. I mean, you can see their living quarters there. It was, it was just awesome. I thank God that I was, we were both able to go. I'm thankful that my mom got to go with me. I feel like it was a trip of the lifetime and that I got to bond with some people from church that I've been going here and didn't know their name, never really talked to them. And it was so amazing. A human could not have done that. The way God took care of every single detail, how to feed the animals and had a sunroof on it, uh, for their garden, it just, it just, you could feel the power of God when you were inside there. One thing that I got out of it the most was how much it was in the book of Genesis about it. It talked about how Noah built it exactly the dimensions that God wanted it and the, uh, the size of this ship. Uh, the facility, the whole thing, I think, was over 800 acres that it was on. And not only is the ark at that location, they have uh, a big uh, building that they uh, hold a uh, church, I guess, in it, and different speakers talk in it. And it's awesome to really see that uh, the craftsmanship and some of the work that they've done. You don't have to worry about the staircases. There's no staircases in the ark. It's all ramps. And uh, the uh, lighting was fixtures with the old style lamps, the old oil lamps that were hanging in there. It, as you go into the ark, they had a cutout of how thick it really is. I hope somebody had a picture of it. It looked, I would say it's over three foot thick. It's three layers of wood. There's not a nail in it, no where it's all pegged. And you can see just so much craftsmanship in it. Uh, it's a moving and honorable thing just to go and, and see. I think every Christian, I've told this when I got home to everybody that I knew, that once in their lifetime, I think everybody needs to see that this is a true replica that was built according to what God had told Noah to build. One of the things they stressed in there was that the dinosaurs, like it says there could have easily been dinosaurs in that day. They have found all kind of evidence that man and dinosaurs did 
live together where a lot of modern scientists say, oh, no, that's not possible. But it's showing in there most everything you see is as, as infants. It's young animals. It's not, you know, been easy for them to store baby dinosaurs that would grow, but maybe not those that's 40 foot tall, but it would have been easy. They were showing how you could have still done that, put dinosaurs, and so there were several samples on there. David? Uh, two of the things that uh, I was impressed with was how insignificant we are as people, but how significant and great God is. Amen. Amen. Because we, uh, unless God helped and did, and did this himself, there's no way just men could do this. And uh, the second thing is being on a bus ride with uh, a bus load of good Christian people. It's a, I've been on bus rides before where it was not that way. And uh, being with good people, good Christian people that thought alike and felt alike and loved God the same was a great experience. Amen. Well, I just want to say that... Uh, Anybody that, that saw the Ark and even the Creation Museum, if they could look at that and say that there's not a God, then there is something very wrong with them. And just the, the massiveness of the things that they had on the Ark for the animals, the feed and the water and the way that they had to dispose of the waste. And uh, it just made what you read in Genesis every day, or when we do read Genesis, uh, come alive, and you can just see it all happening. Uh, when you read it, it's, it's, it's so much like what the Bible says. It's what the Bible says. But to see it just puts it in a new perspective. And like David said, to fellowship with all the ones that we had on the bus was wonderful. We had a good Christian time. Everybody had a good time, but it was it was just great. If you ever have the opportunity, please go. And I want to say thank you to Roxy and Brother Whalen for starting this and getting Shelley. it all together. Shelly. Shelly. Yeah, I'm leaving Shelly out. But uh, we just, you know, we wish y'all could have gone to. Of course, Brother Mike and Don, we enjoyed, but we wish y'all could have joined us too. Well, me and my wife, she's not here tonight. We enjoyed it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, folks, we can tell you how big that thing is. Until you walk up there and look at it, you're gonna be in awe of it. I mean, no, I mean, he was just, when God told him to build it, and it took him over 100 years to build it. You go up and look at that guy, and they had all the modern tools to do it. Just imagine how old Noah did it back in the days there. He just had simple stuff. For him to build something that big, he was dedicated to God. And the details of that stuff up there was amazing. And if we all just could have be just partially as dedicated to Noah was as that to God, this world would be a lot better place. And if you ever get a chance to go see it, go see it. And if you can ride with a bunch that went up there, there's going to be a lot of hurrah and there's going to be a lot of life and tear down. So, anyway. But I enjoyed it, and I believe I could go back right now and love to see it again. And I believe I could pick up on some of the smaller details that I overlooked at the time up there. You could see, see so much more that you didn't see. But it was a fantastic trip. Thank you for the ones who've done that. Larry and Mira, y'all got something? <clears throat> well, we, uh, <clears throat> we loaded up that Saturday morning, and uh, it was just, <clears throat> it was similar to just uh, having a book written. We, uh, we uh, enjoyed that day. We, we ate together on the trip to Jackson, we uh, went all the way up to the other side of Nashville and stayed that night. And uh, just that next morning we got up and we went to the Creation Museum, which was just awesome. I mean, it's just, uh, 
the things that goes on, it's just you feel the presence of the Lord. So we stayed that day there, and we left and came that night out, out close to Cincinnati um, and spent the night there and got the next morning up and went to, uh, it was about an hour trip south to the Ark. We couldn't stay there at the Ark because there's no hotels there close by. So, but when we did get to the Ark, it was kind of like a just magic, uh, magical. Seeing it, and it, if you didn't even go inside, just seeing it from the outside is, is breathtaking. But I did enjoy it. My my family enjoyed it, and I say family. Each one that was with me that day was my family. kind of ditto what everybody said. I have uh, never been on a bus ride with a total um, Christian, with everyone on there. You knew without a doubt they were believers and Christians, and it was just a, it was an extra sweet experience for me because there was so much laughter and so much very little grumbling, and it was just, um, it was just a very special time, and I love all the people that were on the trip. There's so many things written in the ark. Um, every location had writing, and I just, it was kind of overwhelming. I, I would go again, and I, and it's, if I could, soon, it's because I'd like to just spend more time reading and taking pictures of all the information they had. I know one thing, I don't know if it would, will make an impact on you, but they're talking about that creation is 6,000 years old versus the millions, if I got that right. Yeah, millions, yes. And there was one story that stuck in my mind. There was, um, they had a thing on the, um, they had different exhibits on the Ice Age and all of this. But they said that the airplane in World War II in Greenland that got left there, there were some airplanes that got left there, and they found them only 50 years later buried under 250 feet of earth, snow, and ice. So they said that it is very likely things could be buried that far and the earth be only 6,000 years old. And I don't know, that just, that spoke to me a little bit, something different. But there were all kinds of scientific facts and it was, that was a little bit overwhelming. But it was, I would love to go again and just see if I, you know, see some, of the, notice some of the things I didn't notice this time. Stone, you don't have anything? Oh, Wayne? What was amazing was all the vessels that they had to store their grain, their food, for them to eat and everything in it was made so much like they did back then. And the way that God showed them to store it, that none of them would break or anything. And inside, me and Daniel discussed a lot of creation I, I love discussing and talking creation and how old the earth is and everything. But we've discussed over time, how do they make the, the vessel float and not have tiny cracks? Well, the secret to it that we found out is they had squares with water in it. And as the ship went up and down, it pushed air up into the ship and sucked things out as it went down. And there were several of those big squares that uh, had water in them. So they give them fresh air, fresh water, and the way, as I said, to get rid of the waste as it sucked down, it pulled the waste under the boat and everything away from there. But creation, if, if you ever go, you'll realize just how creation, how God did it, because like they said, some of them logs and stuff they used, 10 men couldn't pick them up. It'd take a crane, and yet God gave them the strength and the mechanical wisdom to do that, because that boat's, what, 180 foot tall? So, oh, you're asking me? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it's, yeah, it was somewhere around that, 100 feet, something like that. Yeah, it was, you know, tall to get everything up there. And what you see there, then they had another part on the very top was, was their... Uh, 
with the rain come off and the rain went off the ship and went into special things for drinking water. But it's amazing for somebody to think that back then God showed them how to filtrate and how to get fresh air in amongst the animals and amongst them at all times. That's it. Okay, on the lighter side. Have I got a game for y'all? <laughs> Somebody had to keep this bus moving. And it was her. All right, and it was me. We had fun, we laughed, and so, ain't that right, David? <laughs> All right, I have some statistics here, and for every answer you give me correct, I'm going to give a dollar to the offering. All right, so I have, how long was the ark? Did any of y'all get that? 333 feet, 510 feet. Ooh, you get a, a, God gets a dollar. All right, it's 510 feet long. All right, how wide was it? 385. You study. I've been studying. 85 feet wide. All right, how high was it? You can't play. Okay. No, I'm joking. How high was it? It was 51 feet high. All right. Side, wasn't it? That's very tall. It said 51 feet high. All right. How many millions of feet of wood, timber, did it take to build the ark? Three, you closed. No, it was 3.3 million feet of timber. All right, now you can play on this one. All right. <laughs> Give me one wood that was used to build the ark. There were five different Go woods, wood. but I need just one. Go for wood. Go for wood's good. Go for wood. It was made from um, Angelman Spruce. It's Douglas Fern. Uh, it looks like radiator, but I know that's not the name of it. But pine and bamboo. And it had three decks. And um, what floor did they live on? What floor was... It was three decks, but there was three... Levels. Third. 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 Their home, their whole level was on the third floor. So um, that's a lot of footage that they had to take care of all those animals, feed themselves. And um, it was a learning experience. But I had so much fun and laughter and uh, got to know some of these folks. Del DeMoss is not here and he's a sneakster. Um, <laughs> Larry is too, so, but we had a good time. Waylon, Roxy, Shelly, Susie, all that had a part, we thank you. And um, Nicole and Sheldon, you know, they helped out the preacher a lot, um, helping with Summer in her wheelchair on and off the bus. There was so much, um, everybody helping. The kids were excellent. They, we had like four children. Didn't give none of us a problem. They entertained. They were well-minded. Um, sang for us. We had a lot of a lot of fun, and I'm so grateful that I got to go. Oh yeah, and some worked on the bus where we sat at A and W Root Beer. <laughs> yeah, Kathy dance. Only when the Saints won did Kathy dance. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, well, the Sunday before we left, um, guess what the Sunday school lesson was? It was Noah. So those that were going on the trip were excited about that, and then they were um, asking me all kinds of questions in children's church. How did they know how big to build it? And I said, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. God told them how. So um, that kind of, you know, set them, get, got them ready to go, but... Um, just learning a lot of people. Uh, I was interested in what 
on the bottom floor watching how where they had the cages and how each cage was built and the slats, you know, they had animals stacked on top of each other, smaller ones, but you would think that when they went to the bathroom it would all fall on the ones under them. It didn't. They had they had slats a certain direction and these trays that would pull out and it would empty down into different things in the floor and it would go into that filtration system like what he said. It was amazing seeing all that and um, how they stored all their food and um, how they, you know, one thing would use to feed this animal, which, it, by the way, all they talked about all the signs and stuff. We bought the book that re, you can read all the signs and see all the, the displays and everything. So if anybody will see that, I meant to bring it tonight and I didn't. But um, anyways, we had, we had a blast. Um, I learned that uh, Linda Gale likes to stick tissue paper up her nose. It's the <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy got real happy feet when the Saints won. But she did have some pretty good jokes. Once we got her lit up after the Saints won, she had some good jokes. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I gotta tell the I gotta tell the skunk joke, y'all. It's just oh, hilarious. I wouldn't, but I'm so glad you are. <laughs> okay, it's hilarious. Okay, well, I don't know why me and Michael sat in the middle of the bus, and I think we got the smallest seats. It was smaller than airplane seats. Can you imagine? So, yeah, there it is right there. Anyways, um, so after sitting and riding like this for a while, I said, I can't stand it. There was empty seats in the back, so I went and sat in the back. Well, um, I don't know if it was the first day or the second day. That's because we had more fun in the back than they did. That's the right. Day. I don't know if the first day or the second day, I got up and I would walk towards the middle of the bus to, to you know, talk to Michael or whatever. And about the time I hit the middle of the bus, there was a dead skunk in the road that nobody knew, we didn't see. The only thing is, is they say that the smell followed me all the way to the front of the bus. So by the time I got to the middle of the bus, they were hollering, oh, Dawn, oh, you stink. I stopped and I said, what, what's wrong? By the time I said, oh, that's a skunk, y'all. Y'all know that's a skunk. So needless to say, they ragged me the rest of the trip about stinking like a skunk and it wasn't it was a dead skunk in the road and they all knew it Bella what you want to say I just want to tell y'all that it was a fun trip um you can really learn a lot on the ark you can learn some memory verses whenever you go to every spot where you'll see a picture at the Whenever you look down, there's a memory verse that you can read and you can memorize it. Bible was everywhere, wasn't it, Luke? It was, it was very impressive to me when we were walking up to the ark, how massive it was. Mm -hmm. The only thing that kept going through my mind was he had to have a lot of faith to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the time that it took to build it, to continue to do it, he was being mocked, he was being called crazy, and the, the amount of work that would have gone into it, I just kept thinking, man, I just think I would have probably given up at some point. I mean, that just, it blew my mind, just the amount of faith it would take to do that. And um, then at the Creation Museum, it was, you know, it's stuff I've known all my life, but to actually, the way that they put it, um, as far as talking about how the world was meant to be before sin entered the world, and really um, just explaining what a difference sin made when sin came into the world, and how um, being able to read through different things with the kids and explain to them this is how beautiful the, the world would have been and how things were until sin entered and how, you know, things wouldn't be the way they are now if it had not entered. And so it was very, it was a very good learning experience for me just to put things in perspective that I've always read about and known about, but puts it in a different perspective when you see it, um, experience it for the first time. Oh, yeah. We were not meant to be meat eaters until sin entered the world. We were meant to live off of the plants and um, vegetation 
And so sin, that was one of the things that sin changed was that we became meat eaters along with many, many other things. <laughs> Bella, did you have something to say? Go ahead, say it. When we saw the animals, it was fun because we got a pet a llama and then we got a ride, a camel, and then it was fun when we got to see the people and we watched a movie in the bus and we sang songs and it was fun. Y'all quoted your scriptures too, didn't you? There's a lot of... Me and Carson uh, said our scriptures and we had a very... And me and Luke and Carson had a very fun time on the trip. Okay. Well, our time's about up. Just... Sir? Yeah, you Oh. Wayne, you have something to say? Uh, in the Bible it says the average cubit was 18 inches. Uh, they had a plaque there that said that in Noah it was 20.3 something inches long. Is how. So when you read the Bible it says so many cubits, it's times 20.34 inches. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things that I, I've read too, that we still build ships today on the same ratio that they built the ark. Modern ships today still use the same width length, height, ratio that they did on the ark. So that was a God thing. Um, one of the big things people say, well, how do they know? How do you know that their, their living quarters look like this? And how do you know that, they're, that they put cages right here, right there? The whole purpose of the ark is to show you that it could be done. The Bible doesn't say their beds look like this. Their living quarters look like this. And their living quarters was exactly right here. Some of that they they're estimating, they're evaluating, but they're showing you that what the Bible says can be true. It could be done. And that's the whole purpose. Not that where they put this cage here or this living quarters here, but how did they handle the rain, getting more water? How did they handle the, uh, uh, basically the sewage system for all the animals? It shows you. There's videos you see all along the way that better explains all of this stuff. Even kind of the building of the ark, how they would have done that. So it's not like you're just looking. There's also educational videos along the way. But the whole purpose is to show scientifically. Now, the Creation Museum shows you, um, it goes from creation to the cross. So just so you know this, the Creation Museum and the, and the ark, both of them have one agenda, point to Jesus. Both of them do nothing but point to Jesus from the beginning to the end. They'll tell you right up front, our hope is that you'll gain faith in Christ and that you'll come to know Christ, come to know God through Jesus Christ. And that's their whole agenda. It's evangelistic. So it's not just to kind of argue a point, but they show you biblically why God did what He did and how that, that really they take on science. It says the world, oh no, the world's millions and millions of years old. They said, no. It shows you how carbon dating is wrong and even the uh, layer science of like where the Grand Canyon is at. They show you how that could have all been done. And they show you canyons that have been cut in just a few years. And they want to say, oh, no, it would have taken millions and millions of years. They're saying, no, we can show you canyons that have been cut in much less than what you're saying. So it really does take on the falsehoods of much of science today. Science is science, but sometimes science has an agenda and that agenda is to, to suppress faith in God. Uh, so that's, like I say, you can get science in two ways nowadays. You can get it where faith is involved and you can explain it with God. Or you can find scientists who do everything they can to try to disprove God. And so uh, uh, it's kind of like, like real news and fake news, I guess, today. <laughs> Well, it says on there they, they may have stayed on the ark as much as close to a year. It may have been almost a year before they actually got off the ark because the water had to recede and they had to, they had to wait till there was greenery, so they kept sending out doves. You know, the Bible tells you that till they brought back a green branch. So it's not like they were just on there for 40 days and 40 nights while, the rain, while it rained. You can imagine how long it would have taken for the earth to come back up and for greenery to come out on the earth. And it also stresses the, the falsehoods today that man and dinosaurs did not live together. They're saying, oh, yeah. I mean, there's so much evidence of uh, finding dinosaurs and man in, in fossil records in the same fossil area. 
So they know that they lived at the same time. Uh, huh? Book of Job. Book of Job, yes. The, the, you said the first ark? Well, yeah, we don't, I mean, we don't really know for sure about that. We don't know if, uh, we know that it appears that there could have been dinosaurs around at that time, uh, at the time of the, and, and you could see where maybe a lot of them would have been killed in the flood, you know, a lot of the dinosaurs, the bigger ones that couldn't get out, you know, that had to have air. Yeah, just so you, you understand when they say, people say, oh, they could have never got all the animals of every kind of animal on the, on the ark. Well, they can because the thing that they stress is kinds of animals. Not every animal, not every, they didn't get every, uh, take cats for, or, or dogs, for example. They didn't get two of every Dotsons and two of every German Shepherds and two of every, you know, they, they didn't get two of every type of dogs. They got a domestic Dog, they got domestic dogs. I don't know exactly how the kinds break down, but they did get one of e a pair of each kind of animal. Uh, so some people say, "Oh no, they couldn't have done that." Well, they could. Didn't they? How many animals did they say was possibly on the ark? How many? Three or thirty? Three thousand. Three around three thousand animals. Okay, and and what now? Each person had about 750 animals to take care of to make sure that their feed got put out. and their So you can see that took all their time while they were in the ark. What else? You can go to AnswersInGenesis.com, I guess it is. Or maybe, but just Google Answers in Genesis. They own both the, uh, the Creation Museum and the ark. And we got to hear... Ken Ham, who, who's the founder and CEO of Answers in Genesis, we got to hear him speak, actually, at the ark. He came in and spoke to us about the kind of the decline in the church, and, and he really talked to us about faith in believing what the Bible says. And stop letting the scientific world tell you the Bible's not possible, he said, because our whole purpose in all of this is to show you it is possible. And so... Uh, stand on the word of God. That's what he's. That's why he says the church is declining because of its lack of faith in the thing, the truths of God's word. Okay. He also told us that the ark was one of the replica was built, cost a hundred million dollars, and it didn't. No government funding. It's all donated money. Two hundred people a day working on the ark. It still took them right at two years to build it with all the tools we have today. You can imagine what it was like in Noah's day. <laughs> and I always wondered about the iron and steel, and you know, it said in the video that that was hired down. Yeah, yeah. You can actually find in Noah's day there was a there was a really uh, a really uh, it was a period of improvements. There was a lot of new things going on, and there was the beginning of the Iron Age at that time. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, we can talk to you some more when we dismiss. Let's finish up here. Let's dismiss. And y'all just remain. Just stand up, and we'll just go ahead and close in prayer. And you can talk to everybody a little bit afterwards. And uh, But go when you can. Go if you can. You, you'll get blessed if you go up there. It's a lot to learn. And uh, Bible verses for everything they tell you. They may not know exactly where that living quarters was at, on, in which section of, the, of that level, but they tell you how it definitely could have all been there, could have all been done, and, uh, and that helps a lot. All right? Thanks for being here. Let's close. Father, thank you for just a chance to uh, discuss your beautiful creation. God, the miracle, the miracle of the ark. God, how you judged man and you, you provided a, an ark of salvation, and you just had one door in it. And that door was Jesus Christ. And Father, just like they had to come in one way to get in that ark to survive, we have to come in one way to get into Christ, to get into you today, God. It's through Jesus Christ, the door to the Father. 
So, Lord, tonight we thank you that we uh, had this trip possible. Thank you for those that planned it and prepared for it, Lord. And, God, we just pray that our faith would be strengthened, that we'll never forget what we've seen, God, in our, and, God, that we have seen your word uh, be enforced. God, we have seen that word, uh, how, it, how it is so possible and so real when the world doubts it today. And, God, we just thank you for that. And, God, I just pray that you just bless us from it. Continue to teach us through it. And Father, continue to teach our church about believing the Word of God and never turning from it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You're dismissed.